Hello all, welcome to Embedded Linux Learning Point. Linux from scratch 11.0, episode 8. Let's continue from where we last left last time. In this episode, we concentrate on compiling across tool chain. So in this uh, episode, we will build a few of the modules or a few of the packages that are needed for compiling across platform. Introduction. This chapter shows how to build a cross compiler and its associated tools. Although here cross compilation is faked, the principles are same as for a real cross tool chain. So the reason why it says cross compilation, compilation is faked uh, because for both the LFS system and the host, we use x86 architectures. That is the reason it is it says it is faked. But in the actual build, for example, if you're building for ARM architecture, we will have to do a cross compilation for the tools. The programs combined, sorry, the programs compiled in this chapter will be installed under the LFS tools directory to keep them separate from the files installed in the following chapter. The libraries, on the other hand, are installed in their final place since they pertain they pertain to the system we want to build. So the first module that we would build is WinUtils 2.38 fast one. The WinUtils package contains a linker, an assembler, and other tools for handling object files. So it is approximately one SUB. Let's see how much time it will take. Required disk space is 620 MB. I think we have oh, much more than that. Okay, so the installation of cross WinUtils. So in the last episode, we see uh, the general compilation instructions. So basically, it says we have to uh, unzip the file and then once after the build we need to delete the unzipped uh, folder so that's the high level of these instructions it is important that winutils be the first package compiled because both glibc and gcc perform various tests on the available linker and assembler to determine which of their own feature to enable. The WinUtils documentation recommends building WinUtils in a dedicated build directory. So this is the build directory that is needed. See the build. Okay, so what we will do is first we will extract the WinUtils. Then we start build. We, we will start build. So then cd to lfs okay, so we are in lfs then we do an ls and we go to the sources the list we have We should have binutils. Did that do it, sir? So we will extract it. To extract, we use the and the tar unzip uh, tool. It's XVF tar XVF and the full. Spinutils eight dot tar. So I need to give an minus XVF and it gets downloaded to Spinutils folder. You see, there's a lot of files that's okay. And we will let's have some information on what this Spinutils does. We'll do some Google search and find out what the binutils is required for okay so 
do cd to generators okay so it has this one okay then make dir we built kdir fnb build created and cd build then note in order for acb values listed in the rest of this book to be of any use measure the time it takes to build this package from the configuration up to and including the first install to achieve this easily wrap the command in a time command like this time okay configure and make an install so okay let's see now prepare binary tools for compilation okay so first it's build right now we are inside build and So the the binutils configuration we we're basically configuring the binutils. If you see the meaning of the configure options, prefix LFS tools. This tells the configure script to prepare to install the binutils program in the LFS tools directory, as said above. With uh, with sysroot is lfs for cross compilation this tells the build system to look in lfs for the target system binaries as needed if an fn target equal to lfs dgt because the ma the machine description in the lfs dgt variable is slightly different than the value written by the configure guess script this switch will tell the con Tell the configure script to adjust Binutils build system for building a crosslinker. Disable NLS. This disables internalization as I18N. Sorry, IL8N is not needed for the temporary tools. Disable W error. This prevents the build from stopping in the event that there are warnings from the host com hosts compiler. Okay, so we'll do configuration. Okay, so this is the step. Okay, okay. Okay, so configuration is done. It did a couple of things. It did check a couple of things here. Build system type is x86 PC Linux Genio. Host system type is x86 PC Linux Genio. And the target system is x86 LFS Linux Genio. So if you have seen my previous video here, uh, for our build, it's a cross compilation, but it shows what is the build, what is the host, and what is the target in this uh, configuration. Okay, for a BSD compatible install, user bin install, whether ln works, yes, whether lns works, yes. So it just checks few things that are needed for the uh, compilation. The C compiler works, yes. For C compiler default output file name, okay. A dot out. Okay, we'll see some of the important things for GCC option to accept IS to C89, none needed C99, none needed for G G. Whether we're using GNU C compiler, yes. Okay, okay. M4 flex 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 no make M4 make it for I think it's fine equally it should work okay 
so then continue with the compiling the package so we use make okay it started building might take a couple of minutes and by then we just uh, try to learn what binutils is needed for Okay, so I think here we get some information on binutils. GNU binutils are a collection of binary tools. The main ones are LD, it's the linker, AS, the GNU assembler. Okay, but they also include address to line, converts addresses into file names and line numbers. They are a utility for creating, modifying, and extracting from archives C++ filter, filter to demangle encoded C++ symbols. DLL tool creates files for building and using DLL. Gold, a new faster ELF only linker, still in beta, beta test. GPROF, display profiling information. NLMCO con converts object code into an NLM NM list symbols from object files OBJ copy copies and templates object files OBJ dump displays information from object files RANLIB generates an index to the contents of an archive read ELF Displays information from any ELF format object file size lists and selection size sizes of an object or archive file strings lists printable strings from files strip discards symbols win DMC a Windows compatible message compiler win address compiler for windows resource files most of these programs use bft the binary file descriptor library to do low level manipulation many of them also use opcodes library to assemble and disassemble machine instructions the binutils have been ported to most major unix variants as well as Wintel systems and their main reasons for existence is to give the GNU system and the GNU or Linux facility to compile and link programs. Basically, Binutils is the utility of binary tools. Okay, it's still running. Okay. Well, so Turning binutils, we already have the latest 2.38 that we are using. Okay, so we will fast forward to this. So now we are this, the files are being compiled now. Now the build is done. Let's do the inst let's install this. Install. We just have to do a make install. Okay, 
so it's installing to go mount LFS source images if you see the installation folder is mount LFS tools shared so uh, if we see the installed folder let me open the okay so let's see the other dot let's let's see the let me just do less tools we can see previously it was empty now we have bins and other, other, other stuff so let's get into so ls tools x86 chain let's see bin and lib let's see the bin yes it has ar as ld nm object copy object dump and lb edlf strip so these are the utilities that we saw in the bin utils so i think now we have the tools cd sources okay so that means the now we have built the bin utils from source so this is the typical way of uh, building basically building applications in Linux. So what we will do is ideally we have to delete the bin utils folder. So RM we found or recursive and we force it bin utils thirty eight. Okay, so when we see now we can see the binutils they have the star file not the just the binutils folder so that means it's deleted okay the next is gcc since it takes a lot of time so i will take it in the next episode so for now oh, that's it for now so we have built the binitals and we are ready to build gcc 11.2.0 for the past one i'll take this in the next episode so please do subscribe to this channel and please leave a comment if you have any feedbacks or suggestions thanks for watching